Hey everyone, welcome back. So in this video, we are going to be discussing about the cross drainage works. So uh, we will discuss what are cross drainage works and what are different types of cross drainage works that we can uh, construct. So here, first of all, we can see the definition of cross drainage works or explanation. Uh, so you might know that in this case, we are passing or crossing two different drains. Uh, like for example, one is the main natural drain. That is coming in the form of river and the other one can be a canal that you're passing uh, above it or below it depends on the situation so this type of construction where two different uh, mediums are passing through each other crossing each other we require a cross drainage work so uh, they're usually costly and it should be uh, there should be some uh, study done before constructing them like first of all you can uh, try to uh, make sure that two streams are diverted and they are joining at one area and then you are passing one canal through them. If you are constructing canal at an earlier stage somewhere here, so it is going to be crossing two streams and a lot of uh, cross drainage work will be required and it will be more costly and more maintenance and etc. costs are going to be there. So instead of that, it's a better idea to uh, make it somewhere where uh, you just require one drainage work. Before we start different types of uh, explaining different types of uh, drainage works, first of all, let's try to see the different terminologies that we're going to be using in explaining them, like HFL for high fill level, and FSL for full supply level. HFL is used for drainage like streams, rivers, and natural. Uh, uh, these are the natural uh, water. Uh, supplies that are coming through the mountains or different other regions so these are called drainage and then the full supply level is used for canals so for mountain uh, for the water through the natural uh, streams rivers etc is going to be having a flood level high flood level which is calculated by the previous floods through the years and we estimate that how much uh, maximum flood uh, is uh, or maximum high height of the level of the flood is expected through the data and then we uh, calculate the HFL. For full supply level, we know for the canals that we are constructing at how much water is expected or how much water we require to pass through this canal. So we can have a full supply level for that. So these two different terminologies are going to be used for these specific terms, right? Drainage and canals. Now functions of cross range works are that you are going to be constructing them in order to pass the water through different regions. So this is a theory, maybe if you require to read that, you can read it, but I'll try to explain it using the diagram. So yeah, these are functions. We will explain them in the, in the upcoming image. So first of all, the types of the cross drainage works. The types of the cross drainage works can be canal above the drain, canal below the drain, and same level. So canal above the drain is like the drainage, the main drainage uh, stream or river is passing down and the canal is placed above it. And then there can be two different types of that. In one case, there can be the canal bed level, right? You know what is the canal bed level. It's the uh, lowest portion of the canal. We're going to see it in the image. is above the drain HFL. So the drain high flood level uh, is below the canal bed. Right, you will see it in the image, but just you can note them down right here. Then drain HFL above the canal bed. This is the one in which the high flood level of the drain is above the canal bed. Right, this is the second one. Then canal below the drain is of course the opposite of this one, in which you're going to be having the drain above and canal below, and again the drain bed is above the canal FSL and the canal FSL is above the drain bed, just like that, right? So you, these are two opposite of each other. And the last one is the same level and then you can have it mixing of water and without mixing of water. So these are different types. Now let's discuss them one by one. And before we study the different types of these uh, cross range works, there are the names that we have given to them like the canal bed above the drain HFL is known as aqueduct. The drain HFL above canal bed is known as siphon aqueduct. And this one is known as uh, super passage and this one is known as canal siphon, right? So I hope you understood their names and a little bit about their different types. Now let's discuss them one by one. So starting from the canal bed above the drain HFL. So if we see its image here, then you'll understand that what's happening. So canal crossing over the drain. So the drain is uh, below this uh, area, in this area, and the canal is above that, right? Uh, you can see in this image. 
and also there is an inspection road provided and it's simple right the high front level of the train is here you can see that there is quite below the bed level which is this one uh, the bed level right so this is known as the uh, canal crossing over the drain which is known as the aqueduct but I hope this one is simple then the second one is uh, okay and before that there's another image that I have made here I think uh, with detail right canal canal bed edge of a drain drain bed here I like can see this image so aqueduct and another image of the aqueduct you can see it here uh, maybe somewhere now we are going to be discussing the siphon aqueduct so in the siphon aqueduct you can see that um, usually the HFL the high flood level in this case uh, let me just grab a pointer here maybe a, uh, yeah pointer laser pointer so the HFL is above the canal bed here you can see it right so due to this effect uh, what happens is that they lower down the bed level of the river or the drainage here you can see it here it's lowered down here and whenever it's lowered down so it creates a siphonic action it helps in creating a siphonic action so usually this whole area is covered like there is canal there is there are these pillars and there's a lot of construction so you might not be able to see what's beneath the canal like in this image you're able to see that it's lowered down it's up but usually it's not uh, exposed to the atmosphere directly because there are these constructions above it right so that is why usually you don't feel the atmospheric pressure in the train in that area right there is no atmospheric pressure because it's to totally covered till this region uh, with the constructions like if I just make it somewhat like this right so there is an opening a sort of a pipe is created that the water goes into this section it lowers down right so the water just lowers down like this and then uh, maybe in this region and then goes and then passes out with a pressure outside to the other region so this is the siphonic action that the water goes moves to this region the pressure is created due to the drop in the height and then it moves and it goes and rushes out from the other end like this which is a siphonic action usually this effect is also uh, provided using pipes in no, in canals usually if there's a canal below the river so canals uh, can have the pipes so the water can be passed through the pipes here and the pipes are inserted under the ground and taken from the other part uh, through the other ground the pipes are big pipes which are concrete uh, reinforced concrete plus different other materials used together to create these big uh, pipes where you can pass the water through them to the other end like this right so they usually helps uh, they usually help in the uh, siphonic action but in this case because it's drain drains are big so this uh, instead of pipes they are uh, the drop is provided here right so this is a siphonic action and the water passes through uh, the canal below the canal like this HFL is above and you can read this so this is another image that you can see here right the water passes below and passes through the other one inspection road canal here siphonic aquatics and yeah that I created these images so that we can take help from it but I hope you understood that then the next one is in this case the canal is going to be below and the drain is going to be above so two types super passage and super passage it's a simple one in which the stream is above or the river is above and the canal is below like you can see so canal passes like this the stream is going like that HFL is this one bed level and you can see the FSL is below the bed level of the uh, river right so this one is the opposite of aqua aqueduct here like this then the next one is canal siphon in which now we are going to be providing the siphon in the canal instead of the river in the previous case here so the canal bed is lowered and a ramp is provided to add the exit so that the trouble of silting is minimized right and you can see it here so again you can either use this drop to provide a siphoning effect and then pressure is provided so the water rushes out to the other end or maybe pipes so that pipe is constructed underground taken from the other end and the water passes through them to the other end right this is one and you can see the fsl is above the bed level of the river maybe this is one of the example of canal siphon you can see these are sort of uh, 
those openings which almost creates a pipe like structure and that's what I was telling you that usually it's under uh, ground and you are not able to see the underground region and it looks like there are pipes and no atmospheric pressure is there right so it passes through this and goes to the other end and usually this is the upstream this is the downstream and moving the water from upstream to the downstream using uh, this uh, difference in the head and absence of the atmospheric pressure creates a siphonic action right okay now there is the canal crossing at the level of the drain so this one so for that you can just uh, it's simple both of them are at the same level you can read these that hfl equals to fsl it consists of construction of weir to stop the drain water behind it right so that weir is constructed canal regulator across the canal head regulator at the drainage so we can regulate the flow of the water in this image you can see that so the crest level so the water can be controlled right and the river uh, regulator as well here so that water the river regulator can be controlled allowance and uh, control can be happening here similarly for canal canal head regulators are also available here so the water at the canal can be controlled sometime you can stop that if needed in cases of flood the drain is uh, are completely uh, the canal sorry canal regulators completely closed so the and the re drain regulators are kept fully open so the flood can just pass through the drain uh, as fast as they can and the canal can be avoided to be polluted with the uh, sediments and everything that are passing and only the uh, quality of the water that is suitable is allowed to enter to the canal otherwise it will damage the canal then the inlets and outlets this is one of the example they are usually avoided uh, rarely constructed there's a little bit of difference in them and you can see the inlet the main thing is that the water from the stream enters, uh, enters the canal it joins the water it moves a little bit forward and then it is allowed to go out from there and join the stream there due to some reasons maybe there's no continuance there and then it's allowed to join the stream downstream there it usually uh, mixes with the canal and then when it mixes it also mixes the uh, it pollutes the water of the canal so there are a lot of disadvantages of this so usually this is avoided and the water is entered through the leading channel to the stream so this is a uh, canal inlet and outlet concept this is the inlet and that here is the outlet right inlet and outlet yeah so this is about the different types of cross drainage works so i hope you understood that you can read these different types of explanations for what type of site you require uh, here and what type of um, suitable cross drainage works you require. This is just the same concept that we studied, but selection is based on that. So I hope you understood them. Practice that. If you have any question, you can ask in the comments. We'll meet in the next lecture and discuss some other topics. Thank you very much.